The first thing I remember, it was the 24th of February. It was 5 a.m. It was early morning. I wake up, I woke up and just heard some, some explosions, bombing, something far away from my home. It now has been more than a year since Russia invaded Ukraine. On February 24th, 2022, the lives of Ukrainian people were changed forever. We met with some members of the Ukrainian community at EPFL who share what they have been going through during this year. When the war started, I was at home. We woke up at 5 a.m. because my mom called me and told that they started to bomb. And that was like a huge shock. As it usually happens, it goes through completely rejection to through panic to the state that, okay, I know what is the most valuable for me now. For me, it was my family and trying to make them safe. I'm a peaceful person and uh, war is something completely crazy to me. And even though we had a conflict with Russia since 2014, I couldn't believe it's actually so crazy that it will start a full-scale invasion. And I think that day and the day after, like I was just uh, totally <laughs> out of my mind just frozen to the news and not even being able to eat or even drink water. I was in France with a very dear friend of mine who is Ukrainian. And I remember she got a call from her daughter, her nine-year-old daughter. And I distinctly remember the words, mom, they are bombing us, am I going to die? And yeah, that is, that is burned into my mind. I looked, uh from the window and uh, I saw that it was just regular morning, but uh, everything changed. It was impossible to take a bus, taxi. When the war began, it was my first day in Russia. I mean, it was a really weird time. There were a lot of tensions. Um, and I saw that they they started bombing Ukraine when while I was asleep. and. Uh, my mom was in Ukraine at that time, well, at, at home. And uh, yeah, I just started crying. I was, I was, I don't know, I was in shock. I think like some of the people was already anticipating that it can happen, but despite of all of it, it's uh, happened suddenly. Everyone tried to do what they can. And uh, I think also everyone was like just uh, afraid about their families and relatives. I had to leave my city, uh, my lovely city, Kharkiv. So now I'm living in Switzerland, in Lausanne. My mother, two sisters, now they're living in Germany. Uh, my grandmother, father and brother, they are in Kyiv. Our men, they cannot um, leave Ukraine. They have to stay and probably fight for our freedom. <laughs> Physically, I'm very blessed to be in Switzerland and to be safe, but mentally and morally, I'm quite, uh, I'm not okay. It's like one year of war has already passed and I kind of managed to find some balance for myself. But the fact that I'm showing up at work and doing something doesn't mean I'm okay inside because to be honest, I have never been fully okay since the first day of war. The thing is, what you can see from the news, I, I, I experience it like secondhand because I hear this from all my friends and family who are back home. So my own family, we are separated in different countries. And for the people I know, a lot of them have joined the military. A lot of them did so voluntarily. And I worry a lot about them. And I try to check in on them every, every other day to check if they're fine or if they need something. When I went to catch a train, I thought that we will go with my husband, but they didn't let him get on the train even. It was accidentally my mom jumped in the train with me because I couldn't carry a baby and the luggage and everything else. And she jumped with me with nothing. And we left Ukraine. My dad, uh, my husband, uh, all of them are in my city, where I'm from, in Poltava. Um, since God, we have a good internet connection. That's the most important, uh, but still uh, it's not the same. The most difficult time it, uh, for me, it was in the beginning of the war, because Russia was very close to the Kyiv and I know that my parents will not leave the Kyiv. 
There was a period of time when, when my parents just have like a three hours or four hours per day for heat and electricity. They don't have an internet or something to to speak with you and it was like for several days. What I st still can't quite wrap my mind around is after it began, still a lot of my Ukrainian friends were trying to convince me that it would end soon. My friend waited something like two months or three months to get her daughter out of the country. Just out of conviction that it was going to end. To me that speaks to how how impossible it is to believe that something is happening, even when it is. My grandparents are, are in Kiev. They don't want to leave. I mean, it's like all grandparents, they, they don't want to go anywhere. They're in the, the center of, of Kiev. So, I mean, I call them a few times a week. Uh, they are staying at our house because it has an underground. They live there with our cat, so they have some company. One of my brothers, he stayed here, was welcome in Swiss school and was studying here for with very, very nice uh, circumstances. And another brother was accepted to UPFL and he can continue studies, as, as we said, that what is very important for the young generation. I had to help my family member to come here and as a part of the trip I was going to Poland to pick my family member and uh, so I arrived in the city of Wroclaw and uh, that's where I first hand saw the, the scale of this humanitarian catastrophe because it was trains full of women, children, all kinds of levels of society and of course uh, people were not happy, many people were crying, many families were like the the wife and the children are going to Europe and the husband is going to the army. And it was quite a heartbreaking experience, I would say. Repeating emotion which I had was realizing how many friends all around Ukraine I have. That was really, really tough because I felt that I'm worried about every and single one of them and nobody of them was safe. When it started and we went in to the basement hiding with a two-year child, I stopped feeling myself as a human being. I was uh, as an animal, scared animal that was frightened. We got this train with my mom and I remember uh, that was the evacuation train that I'm going to remember for all my life. All carriage of this train were full of kids and you cannot explain them why it's night, why cannot you switch on the light. They were crying and you don't know what's going on, where is bombing. And you can do nothing. Even they bomb us, I can do completely nothing. We mean nothing. That's the worst feeling in my, in my life. I got an email from my supervisor, professor in Ukraine. So that EPFN uh, invites all students uh, to come to Switzerland and continue their studies here. When I arrived to PFL, the first thing I saw it was Rolex Center. It, it reminded me of cheese, <laughs> Swiss cheese. When I first came to PFL, I still couldn't believe that I'm here. I applied um, to Excellence in Engineering at PFL internship program a few months before Russia invasion in Ukraine. This internship can be a good opportunity for me to avoid difficulties of war. I remember the transition from first being completely strange to this place. And right now, especially war showed me how many deeply reliable friends I, I managed to, to find here. Those hundreds of friends whom I have when they write about bombings I cannot completely relate, and that's why I feel slight distance to them. At the same time, uh, building abroad gives another opportunity to help. I was very happy to come to EPFL because that was part of fulfilling my long-term career goal to become a chemist. So I studied bachelor in Ukraine for chemistry, and then I did masters in France, and then I came here 
And when I came here, I felt like it, it was a good place to fulfill my goal. It helped me a lot from my mental health that I still have this position. So it gave me the everyday routine that I had to get up and go somewhere and at least try to do something. If I didn't have this, it would be much worse for, for, for my mental health. Well, when I first came back from Russia to, to EPFL, everyone was studying like nothing, nothing was wrong. And all I was doing was, was scrolling on my phone, reading the news and calling my grandparents to see how they're doing. And when, when I was in, in class, I used to get like a text from my grandparents. I mean, usually it's normal. But here, whenever I got a text from my grandparents or a call, I would jump out of my seat and go out of the class and be there like, are you okay? Is everything fine? Um, because every time they, they call you, you think it's like something something's wrong. And everyone around me was calm and that made me really angry. I was I was really angry because I didn't understand why we deserve this and like everyone else was living their life like nothing had happened. This war, it didn't come out of nowhere. There was already a tense situation between Russia and Ukraine since Russia invaded Crimea and started war in Donbass. So in a sense, I feel this international response kind of delayed because uh, if we were provided with all this equipment and ammunition right after 2014, I have a feeling that this war might have never happened. Of course, the costs to support Ukraine are huge, financial costs are huge, but the consequences of not supporting Ukraine, of throwing it under the bus, they'll be much, much higher because then the Europe will pay, not, not just with the money, but with the life of their people, like we are paying now with the lives of our people. In Europe, here in Switzerland, in the United States, there still is a kind of denial. People saying that Ukraine just shouldn't fight back, essentially surrender and keep the peace. Just not something you're going to do when your homeland is being taken away. And I think Europeans, and particularly young Europeans, should, should be more concerned with this than they are. I just feel like everyone is forgetting about the war. People get tired of hearing all the time the same thing. And I think people in Switzerland in general, they don't realize that what we're fighting for is, is not because of some land or because of this. We're fighting so that we are allowed to call ourselves Ukrainian, that we are allowed to just live, to just exist as a nation, and that Russia will not stop there. They have begun with us, but that doesn't mean that they will stop. And they don't realize that it's like only four hours by plane from here. I was teaching kids. I have uh, friends who are there. I have younger generation who is there. They're just losing completely their education. The impact of uh, the war on young people is very bad. My classmates even can't study online because uh, blackouts and uh, air alarms. I worry about future generations, like students, pupils that now they cannot study like properly at schools with their teachers. They have to do it online uh, with no electricity and so on. And when I come back home, I want to help somehow with that. I can be a teacher, can be a professor at university or just give some classes. I think for young people, at the same time, it's going to be a land of opportunities. But then I know some of my friends, they, they went to, to the front line, they are helping. Some of them saw really traumatizing things. A friend of mine from Kyiv, who I haven't spoken to for years now, he's, I heard he's been uh, um, taking out bodies out of the ground in Izum. Uh, it's around Kiev where there was a huge, huge massacre and he was helping identify bodies. I mean, when you do that in your 20s, I don't think you can be the same for the rest of your life. <laughs> and in comparison with people at TPFL who just, the most important thing is not to fail your exams. I mean, <laughs> that's, uh, it's very harsh. Everything that I wanna do now, it's come back in a peace and because I really love my country and I want to go home with my experience, my knowledge uh, 
to give advantage for another generations to live in peace. What I learned is to use my anger as a driving force to do something. And I want to contribute to reconstruction of Ukraine with my knowledge and with my labor. Good things which can happen to Ukraine will happen because of people now and in the future, both Ukrainians and foreigners. As a Ukrainian, I must not give up, but I want to be prominent and successful and contribute to my country.